阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Good evening, everyone. Uh, today we're going to continue our uh, Tai Shan Gan Ying Pian, the Treaties and Response and Retributions. We have uh, finished the uh, Part Eleven Rebellious Deed last week. Um, we are very close to the end now, and this is the um, Part Twelve, this empowering others. Uh, last week we talked about how you know all these deeds are upsetting the um, normal orders of things, you know, including. Uh, causing people to have harm psychologically or you know through underhanded means, um, poisoning trees that you know hurts the environments, you know, using fertilizer excessively, you know the herbicides, pesticides, um, and then we we'll move on to the um, you know become uh, outward outward display of anger towards the um, uh, mental figures. You know can be teachers, can be your uh, seniors at works, can be your parents. Uh, when they try to correct your um, work or correct your behavior, uh, when they try to give you suggestions, you know something's wrong with your behavior. Uh, please, um, you know, stop doing that, um, and you outright displaying that anger. You know, become irate, um, be, become angry. Uh, that means you can't absorb any lessons from um, others. You know, can't absorb feedback from others. Um, and you know immediately jump to you know angry uh, rejection, so that becomes you know a harmful thing for one who needs to you know, input to improve. Everyone needs some um, different perspective to you know to be better to understand you know where 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 we need to adjust because we don't just live by ourselves. Um, and then second half is you know under a, not able to go along get along with your parents. Brothers, you know, siblings, and parents, um, because um, you know they are they are you know they are the one close to you, and if we can't um, able to you know have a heart to heart, you know you know understand where they come from, you know where the intention came from uh, through nagging or something, it might be annoying, but you know if we understand where they come from, then we will not be as hostile as you know. Uh, as we would like to be, and I believe most people do not like to be hostile, um, especially towards their loved ones, right? And um, so those things need to be uh, sorted out, um, needs to be avoided. Uh, this is a very key piece in helping us to grow our wisdom, to grow our capability, skills, because we need feedbacks in our um, every walk zone in our life. It doesn't matter what kind of feedback, uh, whether, of course. You know, um, we we learn to take, you know, what we need, and not um, not blindly accept everything. But what what but first thing we need to accept first, and then we can start um, picking what we we need, whatever suitable to us, and use it. If we don't understand, put it aside, and you know, let our life experience catch up. You know, sometimes people might say something that are um, from a perspective of a fifty years old. To uh, someone who's just started the society, like twenty years old, they're very young. They still haven't got to that level where they can think about uh, maybe you know far that far ahead about you know family, about house, property. They just start experiencing what an adult life has to offer. And 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 that's this perspective. This is more perspective for a younger one as, as a mentor and as a as a mentee, as a as a student, as a student, as a younger brothers, you know, as a as a junior. Uh, we could. Enjoy our life, but we could not. Um, but we must have the attitude of, you know, take it in first, even though we don't understand, you know, or we don't like it. But do not outright, you know, display anger or outright reject just because we we don't get that point yet, All right? Uh, because so many things we think when we were twenties will be different at forties, thirties, um, different stage. You know, we use age as a denomination of stage. Uh, how many? I I mentioned this in our um, Sunday session as well, and you know, like Master uh, Shaimini Buddha attained enlightenment at thirty years old. Uh, Confucius say that at the age of thirty, he because he revealed back in his younger life at the 
at the high age of 60 or 70, I forgot. Confucius says by 30, I already determined. My mind is set, you know, I'm established. His, his goal, his directions, he do not change anymore. He just fixes his path. So everyone has different stages. Um, and I ask everyone at the present, you know, at the um, session, you know, uh, what have we done in our thirties? And um, of course, age is not, it's not always the same for everyone, you know, like I'm almost 30 and I'm not getting too far anyway. But um, the point to take away is we, we all have our, you know, stage to go and age is usually the most natural way to determine it, you know, by what time you started to have that realization, you know, we don't have to be that rushed, don't have to be so impulsive. Maybe we need to learn to look at things beyond just one year time frame. They are saying that people, you know, might be you know, looking at the things, like at how things progress, relationship, career, whatever, savings, whatever they want, in five years time frame instead of one year time frame. Because compared to teenagers, all right, they all think about, oh my God, what should I do tomorrow? Or what should I do next month? You know, I can't wait anymore. Or telling you to wait one year is like telling you to wait an eternity. So the time frame will expand as you get older and more, you know, mellow. So back to the point here is just because you don't get what they are talking about does not mean you don't, does not mean they're wrong outright, you know. Whether right or wrong, you need to let your life experience catch up and reach to where they are and see what they see. And then you can say, okay, maybe this is correct. Maybe this is not. Um, this is how, you know, Buddha able to help a lot of others um, teachings, you know, people who, who follow the path, but they didn't get the point because Buddha already been to where they are. And then they tell them, okay, this is a bit erroneous. This is how you can correct others because you already been there yourself. But, but for, for, for perspective of a student uh, of you know young entrant of the society, or even, you know, you may be 50, but someone like 60 or 70, giving you some advice. You know, we're still younger than them, right? We, we, we need to take it with a little bit of um, a humble heart, a humble mindset. Um, you, may, you might not agree with what they say or what they think. We might think this is a bit out of date or something, but we cannot outright reject what they experience because that is their truth in a sense. There is their sense of, that is their life experience. They just share it from what they experiencing. And for us, we just need to take it in and as one of a perspective and catch up with that. You know, when you reach his level in your era, what kind of view do you have, right? Um, so back to this point, the whole point is that you, 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 you take what you could get, understand and practice on it. And then if what you couldn't understand or couldn't do yet, uh, you put it aside and let, you know, let your life experience catch up. All right, so the last one is the uh, forceful, um, you know, like really force your way to get what you want, uh, you know, using unwholesome means to get what you want, underhanded tactics to get what you want, um, extortions, confiscation, robbing, uh, seize, seizing someone else's properties, um, using, you know, those underhanded tactics, you know, blackmail them, extort them. So all these things because of the lack of understanding of cause and effect, like your understanding of um, what you, yeah, this is what we're talking about last week. So force our way in to get what we want, you know, at the expense of um, peace of mind in a sense, you know, you, you, you get things underhanded, obviously uh, it will be taken away from you what, the same way that you did, you know, what comes, what goes around comes around. Um, and uh, no amount of money influence can protect you when the time comes. So cause and effect always dictates that whatever you do is because of your past accumulation of you know merits and that afforded you with all this um, position, fame, you know, material relationship, etc., etc. And this um, way of doing things, of getting what you want, will discount it. If you're not meant to have something, if you're not meant to have that per, uh, that person, you're meant, not meant to have 
that relationship not meant to have that um, position at this time and you force your way in it. If you got it, that means you meant to have it later. But now you push ahead the timeline. Obviously, it's gonna it's gonna you know come at a cost of maybe you know you will shorten the lifespan uh, of your um, achievements, uh, shorten the uh, the benefits of your achievements, you know wealth or power or fame. Uh, you're supposed to get ten million becomes one million. Still a lot of money, but largely discounted because of your negative deeds. This is how it works, and also the relationship as well. You push ahead, you force your way in, or you become, uh, you know, person who break into other people's relationship, you know, who break people's marriage relationships. You know, if even you got that person as your partner, you will lose him the same way or her the same way that you get it because it's not right. Uh, you push ahead, uh, you force your way in, so. Uh, that's a foolish act, and unfortunately, if we do not understand this, um, we think it's all right, and we think as long as you know, you know, no one can stop me, so why not? Um, but that's where most of the sufferings came from. You know, you get what you're not meant to have, or you you get something too fast, too fast, too of uh in advanced before it's time. Say you become some sort of manager or something in that uh, you push your way in you maybe I don't know do something that you know got other people fired or demoted and then display yourself as someone who's capable and and and, and maybe cause the other person to lose their job there's another phrase in Tai San Gai Pian the treatise that mentioned about ousting other people from their livelihood which is bad that was in previous clause but this one is you know, you get what you're not meant to have at that time, or what you're not meant to have at all, robbing, you know, wealth and stuff, or position. Even when you set on that position, um, you can enjoy whatever the benefit of that position. Um, you already have a huge, uh, largely discounted um, benefits at your hand. Uh, you're not, you might not have a very peaceful reign, peaceful, peaceful, um, time sitting on that position um, because you're losing the point of it right that all these um, benefits or these you know perks came because of your merits and fortune merit and fortune happens because you put others all over yourself you put others first then yourself lack of selfishness hence your heart is boundless or bigger your, your, your heart is bigger, means you can accept more stuff, you're more kind, more compassion. And that is the fertile ground for growing merits and fortunes. The more you get, the more you will be able to could, um, do the good things, and also you're able to restrain yourself. So this is how you grow the merits and fortune, good fortune, right? Not just money, but your, um, your lifespan, you know, your wisdom, your intelligence, your, um, you know, everything about you proofs because of this and if we do understand that this is the root of your wealth fortune power root of your you know um, popularity root of your uh, respect people why people respect you because you are you know you really care about people you are put people first over your own benefits that's how people want to protect you and make you the leader if you don't understand that if we don't understand that instead we go to the end, you know, not the root, but we go to fight, you know, over the fruits, you know, which is only one time thing, you know, one time deal. You got the mango and if you don't understand how to plant the mango, that's it. You consume it, it's gone. You understand how to grow the mango, you always get it. That's that's the that's the gist of the entire thing. Um, and this is because we are not aware that beneath the, you know, luscious fruits lies a long step-by-step step effort of, you know, growing, watering, sheltering, planting, uh, let it let it be, you know, let it grow by itself with time and with right condition, you know. This takes time and this takes efforts and, and, and the best thing, mindset is you just do water, the watering without thinking when it will come into fruition. Um, because you keep thinking about that, you end up get caught up in the fruit but forgot 
you are putting the extra effort in growing it. So yeah, to grow your own fruit, grow your own trees of merit and fortunes. Do not, uh, with merits and fortunes, do not, um, you know, get a wrong idea um, mm. of you know you can just get what are, is not yours. You know, other people's fruits. Um, you know, by force. You know, by by scheming, by plotting. It's um, it's not help. It's not it's not gonna last. You know, what you get might be awesome at the moment, but it will not last because the moment when you lose your influence or lose your grip on that, you know, you will lose it very, very, very quickly uh, in the most um, painful way. So the la the, the 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 topic of this of this session is this empowering others. Which is a uh, you know it goes very well in what happens before. Right? Why is it called disempowering others? So first sentence already mentioned. Amass wealth by foul distasteful and illegal means. Attempt to win promotion via stratagems and fraud. Yeah. You know, people in order for, for society for organization to attract right people that you know that that has a right interest, like you know, right conduct, their yeah, rightful conduct in the, uh, 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 in their daily uh, dealings, you know, with one another. We need to have the right role model, right um, reward and punishment in a society, in a society, in an organization, in a family. You know, yeah, because um, this is exactly why people feel helpless. Is in power, like say a corruption, or uh, you know, wealthy people taking control over the country, too much. You know, they too much skew towards their their interests. Their interests only represents one percent of the countries, not the majorities. You know, not the basics. They only care about their specific, you know, project. You know, I can get this tender for mining. You know, this bit for mining license. So I need trying to skew the entire apparatus of the countries towards that end by pouring a lot of money in it and the laws enable it to do it and this will disempower the rest of the population from even putting any effort it was like yeah I'm not, I'm not part of the game what's the whole point of me making an effort to work you know what's the point it's very it's very um disempowering basically it's unjust so that's one thing, you know, amass wealth by foul, distasteful and illegal means, you know, illegal, most legal set up is to make sure the, you know, the, the, the say markets or something are done properly so that it does not disempower, you know, genuine entrepreneurs or people who really want to build something uh, innovative and new for society. Uh, and people who are using, you know, maybe cartel behavior, there's something we learn, you know, like, Price fixing, you know, doing some we call it anti-competition kind of mindset um, in terms of you know business. Foul, distasteful, you know, blackmailing, sabotaging, or you know, um, stealing people's IP, you know, intellectual property without um, uh, without innovating yourself. Basically, we call it asset flip, like you take someone else's um, intellectual property, you know, whatever in in many, many forms, yeah, pay the invention and stuff like that and you put another face on top of it this discourages people who genuinely you know are talented and want to be original in their maybe artistic or scientific scientific or anything the pursuit so that's amazing work by far these different illegal means um let's see what master has say about this uh chao ta jiu jiu yeah. So this is basically stealing. Yeah, the whole thing talks about stealing. Yeah, corruptions, right? Um, corruptions of uh, you know, people who are supposed to lead the country, they um, hoarded the money of the nations. Basically, uh, you know, there's a lot of scandals, right, about you know, using a project as a face to launder the money to their offshore account into the pockets of the, the, the high official themselves 
when problems arise, they flee to overseas, to a country where there's no extradition. So something like that. In Buddhism, it's even worse. If you you know go into a Buddhist society, uh, organization where everything was supported by everyone, which is hun- almost hundred percent donation, depends purely on donation. You know, because they don't produce, they don't sell any thing. They rely on donations. Then, if you you hold the money of that that kind of money, it's very dangerous, because um, Bodhisattva Siddhikaba already mentioned. One of the um, even you committed the five um, most transgre- uh, most most treacherous um, breach in conduct, you know most treacherous uni uh, five most treacherous conduct, which is killing parents, killing your mom, killing your dad, killing um, I mean causing Buddha to bleed. Buddha cannot be killed because his marriage is too complete the, the most you can do like what Shaimini Buddha experience is make him bleed you know? um, and then uh, and then um, killed, uh, killed, uh, murder the um, Arahat or anyone equ- or any sages you know um, and the last one is breaking up a harmonious Sangha so it consists of four people and above they are all in harmonious in terms of their will. What they their will is the, on the same line. They are, you know, everything they, sh- they, 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 they got, the production or anything, like the arms, the bag, or the, 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 the plantations they have, they share with one another. So they're all in perfect harmony, you know, through spiritually, physically, mentally. These are called per- harmonious Sangha. And if you break them up by causing, you know, conflicts, because those four people and above might be a Buddha or at the very least other hunt sages and you causing them not to be sages so these are the five most treacherous deeds and the corresponding karma is five non-stopping uh, hell in a sense that the, the suffering never ends the generic hell in um, Buddhist cosmology is it's basically a reflection of our guilt Basically, as heavy as it is, uh, the heavier it is, the the, the, the longer the span, like the, the the longer the interval, sorry, the longer the duration of suffering is, and shorter the interval, the break interval between. Basically, there's no tea time, uh, or there's no break in between the sufferings, right? But in these five treasure deeds, people who commit these five treasure deeds, they will most treasure deeds, they will go and suffer a hell called Avicii hell. This is all caused by the tremendous amount of guilt, negative karma incurred. This guilt is so strong that there's no stopping, there's no break in between the sufferings. Hence, in Chinese, we, we call it non-stopping hell. Without stopping, non-stopping hell. So the hell keeps the, the loop Think, think of a video recorder, there's no stop, right? It loops perfectly. You know, the, re, the, the video just keep playing again and again and again. So the same goes for this. So going back to this, why do I say that? Because these five most treasured deeds, even these can be purified easily, you know? But if you steal, which looks quite light compared to the five treasures, most treasured deeds I mentioned. But if you steal a Buddhist, uh, like if you stole if you steal from a Buddhist organization or anyone in, in it ser- uh, serving the organization as in stealing this public property belongs to this Sangha you can't be safe you know, it, it means that it's harder than to save you from stealing from the Sangha than committing the five more treasures deed. As the pure and practitioners, we understand five more treasures deed, if one have committed it, and 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 that, of course, is very rare, but it's still possible if they have, you know, last minute, at the very end, they still have that strong, uh, good seeds from the past, past life, then they might still have a chance to go to pure if they if they really regretted it if they really re, really bring out the guilt and regretted it if they feel guilty right 
why is a crime bad? Because someone don't feel that they are doing wrong thing. Hence the crime or the sins or the negative karma is heavier. Once they realize they did something wrong, you know, like I shouldn't do this, then they still can be helped. But stealing from others, you know, stealing from not just one individual, one country with a definite amount of population, but a Sangha, which is a Buddhist organization, physically might be just say we have Sydney NSW. It's just like what, few people, 100 people, 200 people. But we do not count by physics. We count by how many uh, people were in there, whether you can see them or not. What you can see is few, what you cannot see is infinite. That's the most dangerous part of stealing from this kind of organization. Because a country called Americans, Australians, population fixed, 28 millions or 30 millions. Or you, like, let's bring the most populous country in the world, China. They have what, 100 millions, 200 millions, uh, 170 million, something like that. So there are a definite amount, right? There is still a theoretical end to your um, repayment of debt in future as a whatever as a slave or as a as a you know uh, indentured servitude or whatever form of life you take you need to repay all of them but there is a theoretical end of the amount but in sangha they are all connected this sangha is not limited to um, this earth it has other buddha's land as well connected the resources to here so that is very dangerous if you steal one little thing from one part of the universal sangha, that's very dangerous. So say you go to a, a Sydney NSW temple, we call it Res, uh, Amitabha Association, and you try to steal some, you know, donation money or something they are not meant for you to take. Some, you know, maybe high technology uh, broadcasting stuff because it looks very expensive. And you take it home and use it for your own entertainment. You can have enjoyment for this life, no one will chase after you. But what it means that all this money was collected by everyone, donation all across the globe. And then it was also protected by, you know, the the formless being. It can be spirits, can be just a simple, you know, spirits have trying to help, can be Buddha, Bodhisattvas. So <laughs> how how do you sort this mess out? How do you repay this? It's hard. So that's why Bodhisattva say, mate, you can't do this. Like, Buddha cannot help you. Because the debt is incurred by you. How do you repay every one of them? Alright. <clears throat> then, Master say that in, in temple, all this public infrastructure, say the Wing the Fogang San, those things were built by everyone, donate together because they want to learn Buddhism. Doesn't matter what form of Buddhism, as long as Buddhism, uh, they want to be enlightened, they want to help other people to be enlightened so they have this public infrastructure for you to settle down and you know cultivate practice and if you steal one piece of thing they are not meant for you you know those places belongs to the to the temple then you owe everyone and there is no end to the number there's no 170 million this earth even you stole every country in this whole globe there is an end which is what 8 billion that's it all right 8 billion, 8 billion people, um, it's an, a lot, but there is still an end to 8 billion people. But there is no end to an infinite people. Like, that's the most dangerous part of this. <laughs> so don't think stealing is small, you know, you, you saw all this nice heist and stuff like that. But if you steal from the Sangha, which is a universal uh, thing, you can't repay. You can't. Yeah. 这个在主的虽然比我们整个地球所有一切众生之类还要多很多倍 Let's not just human, 8 billion human population It can also be, you know, infinite Like, just the spirits that based on earth it's, it, Multiply it It's still an end, right? But Sangha belongs to the universe Like the whole universe It's, like I said, it's connected Temple to temple. Every single little dot formed the Sangha. Alright. So don't do that. Um, yeah. 
like when you see the World War Two, especially you know, when they raid the te- uh, countries, especially like China with a lot of temples, or the Southeast Asia, um, when they went into the temple, right? Like those military people, you know, they don't understand. Of course, they won't believe in this kind of thing, and they just, they went in there, and they steal like you know those gold, gold laden Buddha statue and stuff like that. When you can see their life after that, you will understand why like, they become a basically a slave for the entirety of their existence. Say so they reborn again and again and again and again until maybe the good seeds finally surface, but it's very hard. It's a it's a it's a tricky tricky situation. It's a mess. So to counter this problem, right? We need to learn how to gift, to let go. Gift means let go. You let go of your possessions, your greed, and when you can cultivate the um, giving, means you cultivate the cause of merits and fortunes. That's the most basic way of doing it. Learn how to give. When you learn how to give, you learn to. You know, let go of your greed, let go of your possession. Of course, you have more f- merits and fortunes, um, and mer- with more merits and fortunes, you will be able to attain enlightenment. Um, right? Uh, no, not enlightenment. Sorry, uh, attain the effect of fortunes because you give, you shall receive what you give, what you reap, what you sow. Right? Um, this is very common, right? Uh, so wealth can be cultivated in this way, right? Wealth, this is how you cultivate the wealth. Uh, if you're not meant to have it, you will not have it. So like Leo Fan Four Lessons is basically talking about this. Mm. Even when you have it, you should think of as if you do not have money, uh, wealth. You should think as the opposite. You know, even when you got respected, you should think that you are not, uh, you should humble yourself. Even you are wealthy, you should not spend lavishly. Think as if you are tight on budget. Um, yeah. And if you feel very reluctant to give, learn how to give it, you know, despite the reluctance. Um, be in your power, but a little bit. Push it a little bit. You know, cut down your um, desires and stuff. Those are very uh, basic, but very important steps to take. Uh, before we can talk about cultivating um, serious stuff, you know, more important stuff, like those are fruits, right? The roots is to give. Who doesn't have desires in six realms? Who doesn't wish to attain wealth? Who doesn't wish to be smart and wise? Who doesn't wish to be long-lived, to have long life, long healthy life, not just long life, long healthy life? Those are the um, common desires, you know, of not just humans but all six realms, you know, beings of six realms, and so Buddhism do not reject this. You know, Buddha did not say you cannot have this. He understands it's not realistic to have everyone trying to trying to go be a path of monkhood and you know, using that path to go to attain enlightenment. It's it's a it's a very precious thing if people are willing to let go of their possession, but if not, do it rightly. So they teach us how to get it, and uh, if we practice it according to the teachings, then obviously we'll get what we want. If we get it outside our um, rightful means, then of course what you get is what you meant to have in future, but you push ahead the timeline and you discounted your gain, your youth. Basically, you you're at a loss. You're supposed to have that much, but because of your underhanded tactics, you know the way the harm you caused others when you get it of course this will be discounted from your gains in the end you lost um, yeah so this is a kind of a transgression that um, not just disempowered other people but I shouldn't say disempower others it's usually disempowering um, your deeds it's disempowering yourself because it makes you makes you um, how to say fall into a wrong mindset can get what you want by force, you know, just because you have the power, and that will reduce your merits and fortunes. In the end, it will disempower you, not empowering you. You know, 
those power that you're supposed to use for good, you have lost. Uh, maybe you're not heard of teaching in this lifetime. You cultivate a lot of good deeds, but in this lifetime, you are clouded with these desires and you're not able to have right guidance to correct your path. Just like, you know, this one, when you're being taught in a very young age, people trying to say you, you shouldn't have this, uh, especially people who really care about you, your teachers, your parents who really trying to correct your trajectories. And if we're not accepting or we, if we're not giving a merit of thinking about it, you know, giving uh, it a chance to, 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 to understand what they mean, then we might end up becoming that kind of person who just, you know, do what you want by harming others or at the expense of others. So that's foolish. That's also disempowering yourself. You know, not, it's very obvious that what we do here is and if one person do this, it's disempowering others, but they're also disempowering their merits and fortunes because they, they, they are going to encounter disasters instead of um, good stuff. Yeah. So, if a person who does not know the karma, does not know the teachings, they might, you know, do this, might not aware the consequences, hence they are okay, or, you know, they might be more easy to commit that, this kind of deeds, taking what is not yours, stealing. Um, those are uh, understandable, you know, it's like, oh, you didn't know any better, or um, even though we, we say, oh yeah, this is illegal, but, you know, there's only so much a law can do, right? It's not, you cannot substitute an education, a, a, a proper education, a civil education, uh, you know, moral education. However, what if those people who are supposedly the role model, like, you know, monks, the um, lay person like us, who has been practicing this many, many years, all right, still cannot stop ourselves from committing, you know, this kind of deeds, you know, maybe take advantage of others, uh, indulging in our desire, lust, or getting very easily angered and unable to accept the teachings, or, you know, overthinking, or not overthinking, over, um, how to say, still cannot overcome our thoughts, like, cannot overcome our desires, that's what I'm trying to say, sorry. So know the rules, but still break it, you know, like, um, like the lawyer who knows the laws, but still break it, either way. Why would this happen? Right. If we think really carefully, I mean, if we, if we observe very carefully this kind of situation, I mean, including myself, in our alaya consciousness, there is um, infinite habits that are formed and accumulated. And these habits, uh, primary prime habits that we have committed is selfishness. Uh, those things that we call it everything to enrich yourself, your experience, your senses, your body. And if um, we are doing it knowing that it's wrong, obviously the crime will be doubled. This is like police stealing or killing people. Of course they will be doubled because you, you should know better. Um, and when the fruit has returned, like when it comes to fruition, when you you know, your karma has arrived, it's too late to change. Sometimes it's so quick, you know, it's still able to change while you're still breathing, but when, when it falls in front of your face, it's so quick that you're not aware. Suddenly, you know, you think everything's fine, second mo uh, next moment, disaster happens, or you have problems, you have crash, you have, you know, issues like COVID, right? It suddenly sweep the entire globe. No one knows, no one would predict that. Even they think it's, it's just a normal virus, it's not like some serious stuff, but when it happens, that's it. Life's change. Um, so, it's a very dangerous thing, especially for us who already know the rules of the game, still, you know, committing it. Um, 
So how do we overcome it? Well, Master Ching Hong offered a help to break through this um, bottleneck. There are many t ways to do it. One of the example is, you know, why do we commit this negative karma? Right? Why do we commit this, um, you know, indulging in our lust, indulging in our angers, being impatient, which is what leads to anger, um, being greedy, you know, one more just because you like it. Um, because we're so used to, you know, pleasures. We're so used to pleasuring our body, pleasuring our senses. Um, we forgot that this is not going to be with us. You know, this has an expiration date at most 100 years old from the moment you were born. You know, the, the, the expiry, we usually have expiry date on our goods and consume consumables. So does our body. Our body is a consumables. It's very easy to forget that sometimes. You, you're caught up in the moment, you get you know sucked in and then you forgot that this is not going to last forever and pleasure focusing your life force which is why you're still breathing, why you're still aware, why you're still in this period where you're trying to work your way out because once you understand right the whole life is about you know moving towards either upwards or downwards you know you're trying to get to a better position where, from where you were if not if you haven't met something that brings you straight to the we call it pure or the ultimate goal or the, the, the ultimate enlightenment which is the ultimate in, um, perfection of your life uh, we always strive to perfect thing, whatever we lack of as a species as a being everyone does right like from now you want to see yourself in a better position we say in the most worldly example in career in wealth right Relationship as well. You want it to be better, more genuine, more real, more more sustainable, more more um, stable, more natural. You know, you can't always have all that fiery stuff all the time. You want it to be more how to say intimate, close, better. So so does our cultivation as a cultivation as you know spiritual cultivation. You want to be more enlightened, less hasty. In your, in your act, you know, that's impulsive, more, how to say, more uh, refined, more sophisticated, more aware. We all want that, you know, we all want to improve, we all want to be better. The question is how do we do it and do we actually achieve the targets? If we aim only on the, you know, something that are permanent, of course it will not last. Um, long so all the efforts life force you put in which is for a very limited amount of time only to use something with diminishing returns the pleasure that you encounter will all only last one two three years first year is the ex most exciting part second third and fourth it gets less and less and less so this is not a wise thing in business term you putting your money into drain you're sunking your money down in drain we all know how as a be as a species, we love to calculate. Uh, we love to, you know, estimate. You know, is it better? Is it worse? Cost benefit. You know, that's how we that's how we work. So does practicing. If we understand that all this effort we have directing is towards something hollow, empty, like you know, this excitement from games, from drugs, from weed, from stuff, from you know hopping from one relationship to another just because you like the sensation from um, you know yeah then it, it, it's not it's not productive it's not um, it's not it's not helping us in real sense it's just temporarily you know so that's the root of our um, confusion mi root of our confusion, our conduct, even when you have contact these teachings, it takes many iteration to remind ourselves, you know, if you do not aware, you get sucked into this illusion. Because the full sense of self is very powerful, very strong, otherwise you wouldn't be having 
this body. You know, this is very strong, solidified attachment to self. And um, and the whole 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 life is just trying to get to a point where we can find our self in a sense. A journey to find yourself. Not just philosophically but literally. Like if this body is not you, which you can't be, because if you say this body is you, you only you sentence yourself to hundred years or less, which is most of the cases, 80 years, 70 years, or chill bus of existence that is very narrow, very short, very, yeah, it's very um, illogical in a sense. But then we still very physical kind of people, and we, we still want to um, dress well, eat well, live well, look well, you know, all these products and all this, you know, grooming, cleaning. Of course, those those things are basic hygiene and basic decent, you know, basic um, propping, you know, basic um, hygiene as a respect for myself and others, self-respect, you know, and other people. But then, yeah. But then this is, this is, this is a, this is not something I can put in words because I, I, I'm still not figuring it out properly. You know, I, I know that this body is a form of you, but it cannot be just you. It can't just be this body, right? If you amputate the one arm, it's still here, right? It's not like you're gone. Or the brain, something like that. Those are machines. You know, we, we lack no better word, we call it souls, you know, software. Uh, upload into this hard way. So if we just improving the outside but not understanding how to um, improve the actual person inside, you know, the actual driver, then we can't get anywhere. You're only stuck in this rooftop. You know, this worldly, uh, this worldly pursuit has a roof, and it's not infinite. Yeah. I mean, this is even better. Punish and reward unfairly, yeah. It is empowering a lot of people. Because what's the point of following the rules if you know what you guys did is not right? You know, like if all your effort did is only end up in the same drain anyway. Like it it, it makes everyone you know, lost their confidence in those Society, it's not just. Yeah. So, all the rewards must match the deeds, punishment must fit the crimes. Uh, these are very basic founding blocks of a society. You know, if this is not carried out properly, there will be mess, there will be chaos in the society. That's one on one. Before we talk about prosperity and stuff like that, you can have you can be an economic powerhouse you have, but if the system is not fair enough, not relatively fair, right? It's too skewed towards one part of the society, too heavily skewed until a point that people who are at the bottom rung cannot get up, even with all their talents and their you know innovations then something needs to be reviewed on the system uh, because it reaps, robs the country of people who uh, robs them of their will to improve themselves and others. Um, it's not an easy thing, you know. In world, worldly context, punishment and reward is law, right? We use the law to decree Law decree as a you know we we, we 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 use the law as a way to declare that this is right this is wrong in terms of you know, words so that people will fall in line hopefully and the consequences 
hopefully it's heavy enough to prevent most people from doing it carelessly. Um, in Buddhism, same thing, we have precepts. Buddhism, we call it precepts, you know, precepts. Um, people who people who reinforce the rule of law need to understand the law themselves, you know, just as the monk who passed down the precepts of the Buddha must understand the precepts themselves, must upheld the precepts themselves, otherwise they could not pass down the precepts to other people. You can't ask people to fall in line when you're not in line. Um, and not just draw the line and follow it, but you also need to know when to relax, when not to. You know, it's not it's not a machine thing. It's a human, very organic stuff. Just like human, your wheel, your changes. It, there is a line, but the line is not uh, straightforward. It's, it's uh, how to say, it depends on context and situation as well. You know, ultimately, it has to be no harm. Do no harm. It has, cannot be... Um, you know, at the expense of other people, it cannot cause people to be um, severely disadvantaged. Um, and but to serve the point of you know people really respect the system, the rules of law, it has to be uh, reasonable and humane. This too is also important. You can be very strict on right and wrong. To the point where you know very cruel punishment carry out. Yes, they are wrong, but do you have to chop people's hands off just because they steal? Yeah, nah, that's that's the thing, right? Or if they didn't, you know, um, just punishment does not fit the crime, basically. And um, and also sometimes they are so hungry they really cannot. Maybe the economy is not good, depression in terms of economy or in terms of you know, society is not doing well economically and they stole. And some of them might have. Of course, you can't think like that when you enforce the law. You can't just 100% or yeah, everyone has their own problem. So, you know, it's fine. There are still punishment to be meted out, but they are heavy and light punishments. And they are, they are, the, the whole point of this is to educate in the end of the day, it has to make everyone abide by it naturally, by 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 the depths of their heart. They want to protect this rule of law. They want to protect the system. That's the ultimate form of um, civil society, or ultimate form of um, enlightened society. You know, in Buddhism, we call it people who can restrain themselves. If everyone does that, there's no government. Why would you need someone to govern you if you are hundred percent governing yourself? Problem is we aren't governing ourselves hundred percent, you know. And hence we have formed something called a government in our um, effort to make sure it's not too crazy. Things are not too crazy, out of control. So we don't have to bear arms every time I'm talking to you to buy a food. I need to risk my life from this street to that street because someone's gonna rob me. We don't want that. So we channel our resource in the form of tax so that people can form a sort, sort of standing army to produce something called peace and order. Unfortunately, real world is not that easy. And it becomes something like, you know, in the name of peace and order, we commit war. <laughs> and then, yeah. So back to the point, without going too far on that tangent, um, rule of law or rule of you know, rewards and punishments has to be fair. And what is fair means it has to be not just technically fair, you know, oh yeah, you get to, you get to, and then, you know, you do wrong by them, you need to be um, paying out the consequences for it. It also has to be reasonable. It de depends on the context, right? Uh, just because it's legal doesn't mean it's right. Now, that's very important. Right and wrong does not mean lawful and usually right is in the line of law. law lawfulness means in the line of right. Do not steal, do not kill, blah, those are basics. But sometimes lawful does not mean right. Reasonable means it has to be right. As in it has to be, um, you know, fair. And the last one is it has to be humane. Because you can't just 
lock people's hands off just because they stole. It's not going to use, be useful. So if you make them starve, if the society is economically not doing well, or if if the society is um, the culture, you know, the element is not um, how to say like it's not compatible with the law, then it's it's very hard to get into the heart. Even you implement uh, what looks like a very advanced law, but you don't understand their tribal customs and stuff like that, and you're gonna cause a lot of frictions and and in the end of the day, you know, in, in, in order, in the name of righteousness or for the law and order, you end up doing a lot of killing on the ground. No, no further than the frontier society that we, you and I living in. It was meted out in the name of law. It ended up killing a lot of local inhabitants. These are not humane. They are trying to rectify it, but it's already done. The damage has been done for hundreds of years, at least 200 years. You and I both live in a frontier society, right? Even though we are not in descendants of the, the settlers, but we are still, you know, benefiting from this settled society. So we need to appreciate uh, the understanding of, you know, rewards and punishment has to be fair and humane. What is fair? Number one, it has to be lawful, legal and illegal, which means put it in words, this is right, this is wrong. And then reasonable means able to link these literal sentences into context. You know, there is a story I can share. In um, times of, you know, Cold War between German, West and East German, the, the U.S. and the Soviet blocs. They carved the Berlin half after World War II. As German soldier, uh, East German soldier, there's a lot of people trying to flee to the West Germany because they're more prosperous, of course, they are open economy and stuff, more freedom. Naturally, they want to go because the East is, as you can expect, it's very, so, so it's a surveillance state, basically. So when they try to flee to the West, you know, some soldiers were lawful way of doing it is to open fire at anyone to escape. It's called deserting, right? So law legally, of course, he is not liable for shooting these people. But is it right? <laughs> Just because it's lawful, right? And then there's many cases happen, and they some of them open fire. And there, after the unification of Germany, I think because it won't happen when they was half in half. After the unification of Germany, people have a review on this event. Obviously, I think they they try not to cause, I don't know what it is, but they have this very interesting conversation. They ask the soldiers guarding the borders. Of course, the East Germany, they ask them. So, is are you saying that you received the order to, sh- to fire at the deserters? And you follow it. Like, yes, as a soldier, we do not question all this. So, yes, you can open fire, but do you have to aim right on their head? Can't you miss the fire? You open your fire, you attempt to shoot them, but could you not miss them? Do they do you harm? Do they actually invade your countries? Right? Do they, do they actually threaten your family? Do they actually cause any harm? No. So you could have missed them. Why didn't you miss them? Why did you shoot them? So that's 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 where it comes into pictures. See, this it, it paints a different picture now, right? Of course, these are very very you know trying days where it was split into half countries and like North Korea, South Korea. People would be like, oh yeah, of course those are bad guys. Not this is not what I'm trying to say. Like you can still do your job, but it has to be smart about it. It can't be so literal, especially in terms of you know guarding, reinforcing a, a, a very arbitrary, very ar- uh, abstract thing called right and wrong. You can't just do it literally by the letters. It's it's um it's very dangerous. Maybe may a tool for, for the people who are at the higher power at, and in the higher position. But at the same time, you still have to do your job. You have to do, you have to show that the line exists. 
the line only exists when you enforce it. You can't say, oh yeah, it's fine. You know, you can't. You have to do the job. You have to, you have to re enforce the law. Otherwise, no one will understand it exists or not. Yeah. So to make it right, to make it into the hearts of the people, not just surface. Like Confucius mentioned that, right? If you teach them to just follow the law, they will only do it when you are there. You ain't wrong if you ain't caught. So that's the mindset. So that's not the mindset. That's not the right way of administering justice in the society. It should be, why do we do that? Why do we even need to follow the rules, right? Is it just to get more rewards, more punishment, uh, less avoid punishments? Those are very superficial level right to in order to be a very fully enlightened society we need to improve a better society we need to improve that understanding from you know i can steal as long as i'm not caught into even i'm starving i'm not stealing of course that comes with society of i would need to give more you know when i have a lot well, i need to give more when i already have so much those come hand in hand right if I'm begging and I'm starving I'm not going to touch one sense that is not belong to me you that is justice that is that it inspires people to be compassionate to 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 protect the law because this law is humane and the law we always always trying to administer is administered by people it's people who protects the law not the law protects the human it's just people using this contract, social contract, the, this this thing called law to protect everyone else, majority of people, hopefully, so that we can have a peaceful coexistence as a society. Um, and the last one is humane, yes, right. So it has to be reasonable, it has to be humane, and it has to be legal. Legal, reasonable, humane. That's the three, um, legal means right. It has to be right, it has to be reasonable, it has to be humane, right? And this needs to be grasped very deep, very clearly before we become a person who administers justice, you know? Otherwise, anything deviated from these three principles, it's unfair, unjust. Mm. And there's a saying, 公道不存,人心非福. If there is no justice in this society, that means justice fails. There's no, there's no justice. It fails in administering justice. This legal apparatus, no one will fulfill. No one will follow it. No one will take you seriously. Right? You know, so you can't accumulate merits. Okay, you can't accumulate good results, you will end up hatred, more grudge against the government or whatever so, uh, apparatus is trying to carry out the justice. So if we look at this, you know, people in the t on the top do not properly administer justice, which, in, which means the rewards and punishment are not fitting the crime, not fitting the, the merits. In the end, it will end up in war end up in breakup of society so you can reduce it to family to small organization company shops if your reward to your colleague is not fair you know even they've done so much work and you're not recognizing them of course you're not going to incentivize them to work harder or if your punishment is not correct you know it's not stopping them from doing, I mean, say, harassment on, the, on, other, on other colleagues, sexual harassment or, you know, leaking secret classified information, um, you know, uh, or, you know, leaking privacy, you know, client clients, confidential stuff to others, and you didn't have a strong line on that one. Of course, it's going to cause this society, a company not, not having, you know, not not receiving any confidence from others and in the end of, and, and and if we can do it fairly in rewards and punishment of course they will work wholeheartedly in your organization in your leaderships and if 
what is unfair then? It relies on what you like, what you dislike. That means I like this guy. I'm going to give him more rewards, more salary bonus. I don't like this guy, so get him out of my way. If that's how you operate you know, as the standard, of course, nothing will last, you know. Um, just because your dad is a CEO or whatever does not mean a crap. You will fall, and you will fall very painful. So this is a maturity. You need to learn, learn how to administer um, rule of law, rule of justice. Um, if no one takes you, takes your word, takes your rule seriously, because of your unjust, you know, your administering unjust um, uh, system, then in the end of the day, everyone will turn their back towards you when you need them, or when you're losing the grip on whatever organization you have. So no matter how big or how small your career we are, to perfect it is the hardest thing, including including Buddhism, including pursuing enlightenment, to perfecting your behavior, your thought, your speech. To that level is not one day or two day kind of thing. It's a consistent effort and then you need to enlarge your understanding knowledge you know you need to have a, a, an experience not just reading from books you can read all the Lun Yu and all the stuff which is very important foundation they are all teaching you experience their experience experience from the observation from these sages on how to administer justice how to you know be a good person how to do right by the people that entrust their organization to you, their livelihood to you. You need to have knowledge, know-how to do this. And you also need to have experience. And that experience is very precious. You need to pick up, pick up, absorb, absorb. You need to learn how they interact, how they do this. And you need to learn those people that came before you, their failures, their success, you know, those experience in the past other governments, other organizations, what did they do right? What did they do wrong? Why does a 200-year-old company bankrupt in a financial crisis? Lehman Brothers. Why did they fail? Where did it go wrong? Did they put a reward and punishment in the wrong place? Did they incentivize a destructive mentality rather than a constructive one? Say they only rip the company dry by offering unsustainable products towards the clients just to satiate their greed which is getting more bonus because you keep racking up numbers so those things need to be learned day to day and how you treat other people as well how you talk to, to other people as well the attitude you have nothing you cannot miss any of this if you want to perfect it and so nowadays it's harder than past because in the past people still have well in, well they still learn they are more learned in terms of how to interact with people you know where to draw the line they are conscious of you know that's enough they're conscious of you know more conscious of you know where to draw the line not to be a, you know, over the top in their interactions Nowadays, we're hiding behind computer, comfortable, S splashing poisonous words at, at one person or others just because we're safe, we're anonymous. You know, that's lacking that sort of social skill and empathetic skills that is important for a connection between peoples. You know, this is very dangerous. It's hurting a lot of people and sometimes I push them to bring a suicide. Right? And when you in that kind of society with lack, lack, lacking empathy. How do you work with them? All they think about is themselves. They can't even have the space to be empathy, empathetic. If you can't empathize, right, with others, how do you make a deal with them? All they think is trying to rip you off. That's not the way to conduct business. There's not a way to conduct any form of interactions, you know. The most shallow is business, and then you go into the relationship and heart to heart. But the most, you know, formal, shallow 
interaction is business and that still requires you to be able to be empathy at a shallow level to think how other people you know need to take care of their clients i need to make sure that i delivered not just you know flaunt all these words end up you know escaping from responsibilities when we fail to deliver so that's very dangerous no matter what era it is, these are important. This is a, a character. It shows your character, your society, your company's character to others, your organization character. You know, um, so you need to understand the know-how, technical knowledge, also the people, the people knowledge, the skills. That means you're able to articulate and able to communicate, able to get to the point, but at the same time able to socialize and everyone you know, easy around you and able to bring out your knowledge, able to um, understand where they come from as a human, connect on the human level, connect on the business level, connect on the you know, knowledge level, stuff like that. Um, and that obstacle of doing that is the bottom line mentality, the mentality of, you know, trying to get, maximize your profit at the expense of everything. Those does not work because profit is not something that should be in the realm of individuals. It should be in the realm of group because the effort to achieve profit is in group effort. Um, over here you say, punish and reward unfairly, indulge in excess rivalry and luxury. So this is what it means, right? If we understand how to share, then we will not indulge too much. Um, so, so much people, you know, like forgot about the humane, <coughs> human to human interaction, too much on the money, on the profits. They forgot that. What's the whole point of having profits? Happiness. But if they just chase profits for the sake of profits, they lose the understanding of happiness in sharing it and, in, and having less, not just more. Then it ends up, you know, neglecting the people to people part, the human part, the you know, your your families, your friends, friendships, your family, you know, relationship, loving relationships, your partners. It becomes money, 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 money. And it, it escalate into brothers against brothers over their parents' inheritance, trust. And this is very common nowadays. You can see the news, you know, those big families, big money, when the elder, you know, they work so hard for the rest of their life to build up this company and our children carving up so that they can have another Lamborghini pay off another house their fifth home mortgage it's, it's, it's pointless you know it, it lose, they lose the most important thing of pursuing profit which is actually achieving happiness and that happiness cannot be achieved purely by having a lot of money you need to use the money in a way that you know everyone benefit and that way you feel at ease because this is not just of course there are there are there are line to be drawn and you know this is my finance you cannot just keep asking but the point is you're not holding it by yourself you're not losing you know people to people interaction in your journey to wealth even among the monks you mean among the um uh, master Shingo mentioned that even when you go out like not long ago like as in in the sangha right when the old monk has passed away what about the student the student trying to carve out the profits or the property of the temple that's disgusting because it's supposed to be like buddha has shown not having properties but it's just moving a lay person property dispute into a monk property dispute that's just disgusting basically um, yeah yeah why wearable say that because he saw too much of that thing happening master jingles witnessed too much the meal time like this is just disgusting yeah he saw that oh, of course like lay person right they have properties they have family wealth they carve it up they're trying to sh spit it up the wealth I never heard a monk doing that 
on the temple. This is just not right. It does not sound right because you're not supposed to have a property as a monk. And that's why we are very dangerous to manage this kind of thing unless your bodhisattva coming in. Otherwise, don't do that. Anyway, the point is losing the point you know, because we're trying to pursue profits is not right. Alright, let's not go too far. Last one. Last one is Yulu Guo Jie. Indulge in excess reverie and luxury. No one who doesn't like to, who denies pleasure, who does not like to be enjoyed, who doesn't like to enjoy things. However, we have to understand virtue of restraint. There are points that you over enjoy indulge that harms your body, harms your mind. You get you you lost your will to improve yourself for real. You get sucked into that pleasures and that pleasure becomes the cause of your suffering. It's no longer pleasurable, you know. Drink too much beer, drink too much alcohol. One pint tastes good. And then you keep drinking, drinking, drinking alcoholism. You know, some people drunk, hit their own children, wife. Some people get drunk, spend a lot of money on that, losing a lot of money. Some people get drunk and gamble. You know. Sometimes like do drugs. Of course it's a not always, but same goes for other stuff, you know. Lust as well. You and husband and wife, they overdone it, they might harm themselves, their bodies. Or um, they over pursuing it, uh, having extramarital affairs. Because they're too emphasis on sensual pleasures. Those things are very dangerous. Um, if we have no sense of uh, tape off on our desires, then it will be a bottomless hole for us to sink into and end up, of course, in the endless suffering. A word to describe endless suffering is for hell. Hell does not have to wait until you die. That is a manifestation of the guilt. But now you can also live in a living hell. Right? That's why. Human can have desire but cannot allow the desire to be cannot be indulge in it cannot allowing it to go above the line if you allow it to fester it becomes a, a harmful thing you know 明老者思善, 意者思淫, 事不欲人意也. so in, in the um, one of the dialects in the ancient uh, Chinese teaching people you know when they work, as in when they exert efforts, they think about um, <sighs> they think about they, they when they work, work hard when they go through hardships, they are kinder. You know, look at people who are homeless, who are more um, who are disadvantaged. Most of them, you know, are willing. There are many experiment done, right? Social experiment. There are many of them willing to give what little they have to other people. You only have one piece of bread per one day. Now you break half of your bread to share with other people who are equally as disadvantaged as you are. So even at the hardest time, they're still able to take care of one another to the best of their ability. Yeah, and look at disasters, you know, when earthquake happens, when tsunami happens, people flocked in and donate. That's a good part of us as people. When war happens, you know, we send up supplies to help them but one thing about us is when we get when life is easy you know post-war America look at that post-war everyone's like relaxed and enjoyable there are all sorts of um, excessive luxuries comes out uh, we started to um, indulge in too much you know in 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 in, 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 in lust in um, you know, something that are, how to say, not grounded. Anyway, we'll talk about this next month. So it's already past half past nine and it's very late for you as well. Uh, thank you so much, uh, everyone. We'll continue next Monday as usual. So let's chant 10 times until for dedicate our merits. Uh,
弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。May the merits and virtues accrue adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion, and leave the teachings for the rest of this life, then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitofo.